bought a lemur. Ooh. Like fucking Nickelodeon. Uh, we shit. good? Sounds good. Lemurs have tails. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Welcome everyone back to episode 13 of The Kickback. Uh, if you are listening to this on Dash Radio, thank you for joining us. Also, don't forget that we have a visual component that can be found on sneakerink.com as well as youtube.com forward slash sneakerink. I am your host. Once again, I go by the name of Steezus. To my right, my boy Dano. What up? Far in. So we switched it a little bit. He's to my left now. Uh. Mr. John Colombo. What's up, guys? John Colombo. I'm freaking out about the switch now. Very it just feels awkward to it me. It does, yeah. If you're listening, you can't tell, but we are definitely I don't we switched like it. our new <sighs> set. So usually it would be two chairs here where Dano and I are sitting, and then a couch to our right where John and our guests would it's sit. It's all fucked up. Yeah, we just lost any of our listeners already just by this. This debate over yeah. the Well, scene. I have to paint a picture for them because they can't see this. <laughs> They're like, I'm out of here. Let me get my fucking Bob Ross I'm on, on. the right of Caesars, to be clear. You're always to my right, fool. It's great. Anyway, like I was saying, <laughs> Dano and I have now switched to the couch, and our guests and John are in individual seats. And our <laughs> lovely guest for this evening <laughs> goes by the name of Miguel, who is from Reconstruct on Melrose. Can we get a round of applause for Miguel, Woo! please? <laughs> That's not the sound effect I was looking for, but I appreciate Fireworks it. Fireworks is good. I like that. <laughs> Miguel, how you doing tonight, brother? Thank you guys for having me. Nice Hell to yeah. meet you guys. Hell, Hell yeah. yeah. So tell us a little bit about yourself and about uh, the shop that you have on Melrose. Um, about myself, I'm uh, originally from Mexico City. I was a sk skater all my life. Mm. and. Uh, Nice. Had skate shops in Mexico City, and then I moved to LA. I traveled for five years on tour with skating. Learned about streetwear. Moved to LA. Opened a shop called Barracuda from 2001 to 2009. And then uh, I did a boxing club. Oh, before that, Mexico City had skate parks. And then uh, no, there was no skate park, so I built two skate parks over there. No big deal. I mean, yeah. now that I think Humble about it, right? <laughs> no, but like you nah, guys, it wasn't skate parks like you guys' skate parks. Yeah. It was made out of like, we stole the wood and like took oil on it to build the bones. Like it wasn't, <coughs> I'll show you guys one day pictures. It wasn't like what you think. No. But anyways, <laughs> we, we did a lot of skateboarding shit. That was like my Fuck life. yeah, that's near and dear to my heart, man. So I love what you're talking about right now. Yeah, man. That was like, if it wasn't for skateboarding, like, you know. So, after I missed the boat on skateboarding, because I hurt my knee and all that shit, I was like, fuck, I'm going to move to LA and I'm going to catch it on street. Because I used to go to Paris and London and Barcelona. And I noticed that all these brands were super dope. So I came to LA to skate Venice and I was like, fuck, there's no fucking streetwear stores in LA. I'm going to be the first one. There was a couple in New York, mm -hmm. like there was the OGs and the cool street artists, but I was, I was like, fuck this, I'm gonna be the first one. <laughs> I opened my store, I lived in the back, Barracuda. Damn. And all of a sudden I realized that Eddie from Undefeated and James Bond and all these dudes were really importing the shit. And I was like, fuck, I was just flipping it. <laughs> I, was, I would go to Were're London, like, buy the shit. Bring it back bring here. Bring it, it back. I met Japanese dude that loved vintage and Americana and all this Mexican shit, mm. wrestling masks. And I would put it on American military shit, wrestling. Maybe even Nigo got the idea from the wrestling match back in the day, because this is like early. <laughs> so I started selling sweatshirts to Fred Seagulls for $100. And I was like, damn, what the fuck? All this Mexican shit, flipping <laughs> shit, trading. So that was Barracuda at first. And then we went to Paris. We started carrying all the crazy shit, friends and family Adidas, all the Nike shit. All the Y3 shit. All, all that, that, that stuff. Yeah. All like, but I didn't even know anything about it. I would go to the trade shows thinking that I was taking notes. <laughs> I swear to God, I was yeah. like, they just want to know what I think. They're probably just calculating. <laughs> I didn't, you know, like, I didn't know. Yeah, you're and then the one day, dude, had. one day I fucking opened up the store and there was the UPS guy with 30 boxes. I don't know how I got approved because I had no credit. <laughs> <laughs> and I started getting all this shit. And then I was like, yo, I got to flip this shit. Oh. And I was sending samples. I would go to California Mart and I would buy samples and I would send them to Mexico, sell them for a hundred bucks a pop. So I was just mm -hmm. hustling, you yep. know? And yeah, selling, hustling mentality. Sending skateboards, like 
to Mexico because there was no skateboards, no skate shops, mm -hmm. opening skate accounts, not even carrying it. Like, yeah. honestly, that's what I was doing. <laughs> Then I started trading skateboards for fucking SB, right? SBs. Oh, SBs. Ooh. And that's when it got interesting. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Like, Tell me more. Yeah. Then the motherfuckers start bringing bear bricks and shit. And I was like, what the fuck are those, you know? <laughs> And then I went to New York and saw that Cause had one and fucking Ross had one mm -hmm. and like Union. And I was like, why are these? I didn't, I'm not being disrespectful. I didn't know the difference between a Chinese, a Korean, and a Japanese. Why are these weird Asian dudes have this swag and what the fuck? Who's mm -hmm. Nigo? Like, <laughs> so I learned a it lot like about it. It helped you start to research about it. But this is like early. Yeah. You know? Yeah, back before I shit really started to pop. Yeah. I thought. Skateboarding was punk rock and Thrasher magazine. That, that's why mm -hmm. I moved to LA. I, I thought everybody listening to Black Flag. I got here and I was like, <laughs> oh my God, everybody's so hip hop. Everybody like, all swagged out. Like, yeah. You know, I grew up, I was nine years in New Orleans, so I was, I, I, people accepted me because I knew about Fat Boys and all that shit because mm -hmm. my dad was a jazz dude from New Orleans Preservation Hall. So I knew everything about like hip hop and I went to yeah. school with all, like, all black dudes. So like, they kind of like embraced me and I was cool with them because I grew up like in New Orleans. And I spoke English, but I was truly a Mexican. Like, I just spoke English, you know? <laughs> Don't get it so, twisted. I'm still Mexican. <laughs> so all of a sudden, I got all these fools bringing me all this shit that I'm obsessed with. But to get more, I got to open up a Stussy account. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And I got Back this fucking, then, my homie sure. Robbie is like, yo, you can't sell this to Japanese. Nah, bro. And I'm fucking trading for a fucking, <laughs> like, fucking. Doing everything you're not supposed to do. <laughs> I'm just being honest. Like, yeah, right yeah, now, yeah, I yeah. own my own companies. Like, it was, I, I, dude, I had to pay rent. I lived in the back of the store. Yeah. Like, it lasted for like six to nine years. And all of a sudden, we were fucking hanging out with every fucking cool dude rapper. Like, crazy shit until it all hit the fan because the economy dropped. Kids were coming in and buying three pairs of Evisus for $800 a pop with fucking their dad's credit card. Bam, Ferrari, Shit. like, it was fucking crazy. We had like over $2 million of inventory for like wow. six years, like <laughs> constantly. And the shit was like, just always moving. It was crazy. It was like round two, but like, like we had a line, it was crazy. Before. All the Fairfax brands like were like, I never carried Supreme, of course, you know? It, like Verdo no, knew better than to, to give it to me or Eddie. <laughs> but, <laughs> but you know, I ended up flipping it and shit. And uh, so it was all underground. And then I guess everybody was like, you know what, we should give it to this fool because this guy is actually f moving the goods. And mm -hmm. then I didn't have to flip it and we were actually retailing it. Yeah. And it just became like a fucking, like, the whole street thing. We met all the street artists and we let the wall, you know, we had Banksy's there. Like, we had Shepard Fairy painting. We had Death Punk playing there. Like, it became like, wow. Damn. Crazy. Yeah, like, Will I Am came in and met all these producers. Like, he probably learned about justice by looking at them. Like, they were playing in my backyard. Yeah. We had a mini ramp in the back. Hell yeah. Fucking. Every pro skater was there. Like, it was, like now that I think about it, I'm like, I was fucking lucky because it all was a fucking <laughs> crazy, you know. What and you now it's the whole street do. culture, you know. Yeah. And now we're all homies, and 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 we're still doing it, you know. Yeah. Who did you That's skate amazing. for? I skated for Zorlac in Mexico with all the Texas guys. I didn't yeah, even know throwback. what they like. Yeah. I even had red lux. <laughs> like, <'cause laughs> oh my boy. That's how I met. Like, I got into Metallica, Poshead. I skated for Independent, Vans. And uh, Damn, so Zombie Wheels, yeah, like yeah. Like all that bullshit. I, I wrote like Pablo Peraza, I, you know, like that was my shit. Right. But they weren't giving me free shit, so I trade, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You had to take what you was like, getting, yeah, get what you was really free. wanted. And it was like, yep. to be sponsored in Mexico by anything was like. You was like a god like, out there, dude, huh? Like, well, it was the worst thing you could be anywhere, but at the same time, it was the worst thing you could be in anywhere. The skater wasn't cool. Like, you, you, yeah, no, no, no. Trust me. Like I some get it. chicks liked it, but it was kind of like the scum of the scum. It was the underground shit, and that's what yeah. I liked. Sneakerhead. You like that grimy shit. Sneaker, being a sneakerhead was the punk rock, like alternative culture, uh -huh. and that's why I was into it. You okay. know? Hardcore music and underground hip hop, jazz was what I was into. I'm, Denim was okay. like cool, like, 
only OG like cowboy fools and Japanese fools knew about it, so I got oh, geeked mm-hmm. out. Every level of my geekness was about underground and music and culture and collectibles. Fuck yeah. It wasn't yeah. like, you know, that's the it way wasn't mainstream shit. Sure. I don't yeah. like, you know, I'm glad that the business is booming and that you guys have a TV show about sneakers. No disrespect, of course. I love my culture. <laughs> but, Followed by disrespect. <laughs> but, but this is not what, like, like you come from skateboarding, you understand mm-hmm. what I'm saying. Yeah. Like my boys play music, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. Like hip hop was the underground shit. Yeah. It's but what then made people the start getting money. Wearing a Rolex you know? was yeah. the underground like yeah. shit. It was like being gangster. That's why I wear chucks. Like I like Rolex, not to be fancy. Like I like Mercedes because it was like the fucking like gangster thing to do. It's because when, I was when a kid. you were a kid, is what you look to that all the fucking like OGs and mm-hmm. all the dudes that were like really living that life. That had. people so you, that you looked up to. Yeah, so you you aspire to have those things and to be those things as well. So it makes sense. But kind of what you're saying though is like a lot of those individuals are what kind of makes the needle move and what culture ends up following and trends become based off of. And I think that's why a lot of the shit that, you know, we're into or that you were into when you were younger has become so mainstream and so blown out because people like you aspired to be that when they were younger. And now that they can do that and they have money to kind of like flaunt it, a lot more people are kind of jumping on that train. And that's what makes everything just kind of like, kind of expand at at such a rapid rate. Yeah, I'm still passionate about all this shit. So now I have new things that I'm passionate mm-hmm. about and I'm collecting. You know, like, I'm never gonna, like, not be that guy. So what are you collecting now? Benzies I don't wanna tell you guys, you're gonna <laughs> tell, beat me on it. <laughs> <laughs> no, like, look, after, after denim, I started collecting fleas, I started collecting mm. Hawaiians, I got a, a moment, I started collecting heat transfers. I started, co- oh, I still wow. have them, by the way. I think there's a word for it. I think it's hoarder is the word. I, maybe, you gotta see our shop in Beverly Hills. Like, the US alteration with my partner, dude, she, between, she's got crazy shit. But yeah, like, we're just passionate about all that stuff. Right. And we think there's a, like, dude, I collected Mickey Mouse shit from the 70s. Like, because I think there'll be, it's cool. It was made in the US, it meant something. Disney meant something to people. So we kind of like make a story about it. Mm-hmm. We were into beads, like that shit. People used to trade their money in with that shit. So we, I geeked out and learned a lot of it. Mm-hmm. The heat transfers, you could put any rock shirt that you see that's like from the 70s on another shit, like, and you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's like, yeah. it's like, it's like if you put it, the shit on ice and you all of a sudden can bring it back, a heat transfer from the 70s and you have, could have it on a triple X garment right. and rock it properly, not like yeah. a fucking. Do- yeah, so it's yeah, dope. No, absolutely. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> on a garment they never made back then. Yeah. No, like, dude, I love all. I collect obviously vintage t shirts, but they don't fit me anymore because I'm 44. Like, they don't fit me. I want that shit to look big as fuck. See, you, can, you sound like a purist to some degree, because you're like, oh, I don't like that where it no, went. No, no, it's no, all no, mainstream, no, no, all no, this no. and that. But then you're the same guy who takes these vintage garments and these things that are like are like near and dear and kind of hold value and they have and this time them. and place and then you fucking destroy them. You chop them up, you paint all over them, you do all this shit. Well, let them. me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> let me tell you. It seems hypocritical, maybe. It's not. I'll have, an, I'll have an answer for this. So, I love the wear and tear and shit. I still love sneakers and I love the way they fucking get all fucked up from skateboard. Mm-hmm. So I love that. I'm a geek about all that shit, right? And I love vintage, beautiful shit. And U.S. Alteration, my brand after Barracuda with my partner, was about taking those things and disrespecting them and making something timeless and fucking take it to the next level and make something that was classic into the, into this new era shit, right? But now with, I'm still doing U.S. Alteration, of course. It's fucking sick. We're collaborating with like vintage pieces, and we're getting like people like Retina painting on a fucking hundred thousand dollar yeah. piece of Louis Vuitton thing, and it's probably worth triple now. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's it's it it, it, it was kind of like turning lead into gold, you know? Uh-huh. Yeah, most definitely. So you know, <laughs> so then now I'm into taking shit that is completely worthless, like military that we have pounds, and we're wasting all those fucking garments. Everybody's doing brand new streetwear from China, but now I'm taking Americana, 
making streetwear. You gotta be buying that shit by the pound. Of course I am. Yeah. So I paid five dollars <laughs> or three for it. But then I sell it for hundreds of dollars because we're reconstructing it. It's like alchemy. And I'm passionate about streetwear and culture, but I'm also passionate about turning something that's worthless into something. You're the urban alchemist. Or something. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I would like to become one one day, but I like it's it's inspiring to me. I'm passionate about like the challenge, you know. It's so easy to come up with some fucking swaggy shit. Like, look, I was doing a bunch of sweatpants oversized like four or five years ago. That's how U.S. alteration started. Now I'm doing this sweat like windbreakers and stuff with triangles with like, and it's going to probably trend and everybody's going to be wearing all this shit, right? Mm -hmm. But everybody's just going to be following and copying and doing this shit. So I'm like, okay, motherfuckers. <laughs> I now got I'm you. really gonna fucking make it hard for you guys. <laughs> I'm gonna fucking take worthless shit and I'm gonna sell it for hundreds of fucking dollars. And I'm gonna take my time, I'm gonna over dye it, bleach it, resize it, put it on the baddest motherfuckers and people are gonna have a straight face wearing it. Cause maybe the next generations are gonna fucking be like, yo, I wanna fucking save the world too, kind of like shit, you know? Yeah. And, the, and why the fuck are we wasting all these fucking garments Ripstop is the best material. Like, I'm a geek of denim. I could talk about it for years. But Ripstop and all this military shit, we send our motherfucking soldiers. And I say ours because I love everything about America. Yeah. That's because I live here. That's why I live here. Not, that's why right. I don't live in Paris. Like, I love Americana. It's the best fabrics. And we can make the best skate shit, mm -hmm. the most comfortable shit. It breathes great. I could go on forever. I know. I have a question. So. <laughs> What was, you know, if, if at all, I'm sure it's like way different now. Mexico City is like popping. Apparently, I had no idea that it was like that biggest city in the right world. Now. One of the biggest. But like back then, what, if any, was the sneaker culture or Bro. what? To, like, was it status? Was there Bro. anything? Like, were the brands even allowed in? Like, what was the deal? Like, well, first of all, you had to be rich to be able to wear anything because Mexico City is like, a culture where like you're really rich or really really poor. Sounds like America. No, no, no. <laughs> I mean, it, I mean, yeah, like the America that I grew up in, like New Orleans, but Mexico City, like the, the richest guy in the world's from there. Yeah. You know? There's like the people that own the pencil factory owned it for 30 years, so the kids get to go to Paris and go to Harvard, and they own everything. And then the people have no access to shit. So I was the ones that didn't have access to shit. I lived in the hood. There was no fuck, you know. So when my father died, I went to New Orleans to see what's up. I didn't even speak English. And when I came back, I came back with a bunch of sneakers, of course, you know? <laughs> Fucking Jordans, dude. I didn't even know what Jordans really were, because I was nine. But, you know, they used to sell them in drums for $10. So I would fucking wow. get them in New Orleans. Yeah. No box, though. Just the laces tied together. In like. that moment, there was Reeboks and shit, and Converse was hot. They had fake Converse, and you could only get them in the black market with like where you could buy like drugs or vibrators and the old black market <laughs> shit, which, by the way, was my neighborhood. So the status. Why is vibrators hot? It wasn't like a so, it wasn't socially accepted. Yeah, then. you know, like, get like a bag of weed and a dildo. Bro, I'm, 40, I'm 44. Like that yeah. shit was like it was taboo. It was Friday taboo, special. like porn yeah. and all that shit. Yeah. yeah. So in the neighborhood that I grew up in, which is La Federal or Tepito, was the worst neighborhood where you could buy all that shit, and fucking that's where motherfuckers would get supplier. their fucking <laughs> sneakers. You can get you a and fucking you magic wand and some J's on the same pop. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> Anyways, so it was kind of like everybody was fucked up there. Nobody owned their houses. Everybody, but the code was you you would know what's. It wasn't like the whip. It was your shoes, you know. Yeah. And motherfuckers were getting knocked out and getting knocked out. They sneakers and yeah, dude. Yeah. I, I've walked home multiple times with no shoes, like shaming, like damn. And my mom's like, what the fuck? I told you not to get those fucking shoes. Like, why, mm. why do you even bring them here? You should be wearing some fucking, like, Pan Ams or some shit, you know? Yeah, like, Because yeah. that was, like, the Mexico shit. That's the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Shout out to Werner Krauss. It's my boy. <laughs> so, man? so, you know, that was a government shit, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. So, you know, it was tough. But that kind of, like, I think that was what made me, like, try to 
reach and understand the underground shit. Like I would go to those flea markets back, Pepito, that neighborhood, and I would look at vintage furniture and like, you know, there was so many codes, fools with like little pinky rings and shit. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's probably where I got all this like shit from, like all this geekness about sneakers. Cause over there it was real. Like, yeah. like if you had some clean sneakers, like dude, there was no streets, there was, if that shit was clean, that means you were like... You was floating around. Like you yeah. were like, right? <laughs> floating around. Like, you had, the, you like, had that cloud. I don't even have, like, yeah. I, don't even, I don't have words with foot. I can imagine how New York was, because uh -huh. I went later, and I saw a little bit of it. Yeah. But motherfuckers lived in buildings. They had boom boxes. Like, you guys were drinking right. beer and coke. It has weed everywhere. Cute girls everywhere. <laughs> I was like, bro, there's no way you... <laughs> I don't know, I'll Paved stop. streets. Uh, yeah. Like, I'll stop. I'll stop. Just Google Mexico City, 1975, San Francisco. It's like, Damn. I'll stop. So what are your thoughts on the new wave of sneaker culture where, you know, everybody's got a pair of Yeezys and consider themselves a sneakerhead or there's collaborations <laughs> dropping every week? Shots, like, I'm not, everyone, oh, no, 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 no. I if even anyone's even. listening that knows or watches this show, like, they know that I'm not a Yeezy guy. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, wow. no, no, that wasn't not. even, like, that's I'm just. I'm wearing these wasn't, today wasn't, because wasn't. I have them and I busted them out and I'm going to wear them Jesus to Adidas Christ. this weekend and I'm going to love wearing them to Adidas. Yeah. It's going to be fucking awesome. No, but just, just how, like, comfortable. you know, a lot of people Fuck consider themselves in the game now where, you know, it was the level of respect I don't think is there anymore based on, you know, like you mentioned earlier, the SBs, like way back when SBs first kind of came around and was doing the dunks and, and really making noise and it transitioned from skate culture to fashion and sneaker culture. Now I think that it's almost oversaturated in the fact that, you know, anybody that has access to the internet can be a sneakerhead now. What are your thoughts on that? They're not sneakerheads. They're right. just like, like, you know, they're just consumers. Yeah. Like, um, I could go on for hours about it, but like, for example, I never, I love Adidas. They, they have the best heritage. They had, you know, Muhammad Ali, they had Bob Marley, they had Maradona, like they, they have the most incredible branding, but I like American shit. So I'm a Nike dude, okay. you know, I was a skater, I'm a Vans guy. Mm -hmm. I love Converse cause it's like wearing 501s to me. So that's just me. Yeah. I see that dude wearing those Adidas, they're dope. Mm -hmm. I have, you know, I get it. Shout I out to producer Jack. Jack. Shout, Shout out to Jack. Jack, I, I Jack, see Jack give yourself a horn back there. I Nikki see, runners. I see them and I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, I fuck with those. I yeah. just, you know, He's wearing I Nikki bought runners. them before. I just can't yeah. wear them because it does, like, it's like you wearing like the wrong jersey from the wrong team. Like I'm mm. truly like, it's like I, I don't wear different watches. I drive a certain amount of like, a, brand of jeans, cars, like, I know what I don't like and what I, what's my style, you know? Yeah. So I love all these other brands. I even sold them and support them and my homies rock them. I just mm. don't. It's not for you it's personally. It's not for me personally. Yeah. There's a lot of them that I really appreciate and respect and mm -hmm. they're definitely like pillars of culture. Mm -hmm. Word. Like, dude, Adidas start fucking got Yohi Yamamoto, the yeah, master. Yeah, yeah. On fucking accessible to kids. Yeah. To me, to me, that shit is like the. It blew my mind when it happened. I used to carry it. Was it was so prestigious. I was the first fucking one of the first accounts to carry Yohei Yamamoto. To be associated to Yohei Yamamoto in any fucking way was my dream. Like, I I love Factory Records, Joy Division, like da 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 da. Like, yeah, dude. When I used to walk into your shop, I would not know anything. I you were like, what the like, fuck is it? Yeah, no, what, what, that's why I would walk over there. I'd be like, dude, I'm gonna see some shit that I've never seen before. And that's why I wish I didn't shop there, dude. Right. I always walked out with two t-shirts that I knew that no one else was gonna be But somebody would be like, you know cause there's mean? codes. You just, that's why you go to a store, cause you trust them. And then later you're like, oh shit, that's this. And like- They laced me. And then, and then you <laughs> yeah. just go back. You start to do your research. To get back to it, you know, to getting back to your shoes. Um, <laughs> Here we go. No disrespect. I'm playing, I'm playing. Yo, Kanye is a fucking genius to what he does. Like, I don't get, it's not for me, but he's a genius on that shit, on his music, period. To my point, humble point of view. I'm no expert in hip hop. Humble and Kanye aren't typically in the same sentence. So. <laughs> no, I'm just Kudos trying, to you I'm for working I'm, that I'm, one out. I'm, I'm, I'm just giving my point, my humble, like, yeah, 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 yeah. Why the fuck would you buy a shoe that says Kanye 
or a shoe that says Yohi Yamamoto. To me, as a dude that has dedicated his life to research and shit, doesn't make any fucking sense whatsoever. So when I see it, it's not that it's a bad shoe. That looks like a roosh without a fucking swoosh to me. Amen. I'm sure it's comfortable. The swoosh. Amen. 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 But it doesn't mean shit culturally because yo here, Mamoto's a master. <laughs> if anybody's listening right now, if you could see it, Miggy is geeking out right now. <laughs> like, bro, he's like, yeah, he's like, to me, again, he's like, he's like my fucking Karl Lagerfeld or like my mm-hmm. fucking, like for soccer players, matter. like, so that's why I was personally get, I didn't get it. Okay. Plus I'm 44, so why the fuck would I get it? <laughs> but, but again, I would wear it in no disrespect to nobody. You know, I just, uh-huh. I, it blows my fucking mind. And, and, and that's so it. we have this conversation a lot because, so typically Danny and I are, are Nike dudes. Steezus is a little bit of both, but he t- tends to lean more towards the three stripes these days um, based on comfort. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so there's, there's that whole thing. I mean, so there's, you know, there's the storytelling aspects and the brand ambassadorship and all that kind of shit. But then there's also the technology that they've acquired, um, which it sucks, man, because it's like, for me, I personally, like, I love the storytelling and I love the branding and I love the history and the heritage and all the stuff that's going on that goes on with Nike and just those silhouettes in general. Like that, for me, I, aside from the pair of fucking sneakers that I'm wearing right now that I regret wearing today, uh, <laughs> I like an upper with some structure to it. And I used to wear chucks, and that's like no fucking structure. That's, you know, collapsible as it gets. But then all this kind of fly knit and speedy silhouettes, to me, that's not really as much my style. Um, but on the flip side, what I will say is that this shit is so fucking comfortable. Would I wear it every day? Fuck no, because it's not really my style. And I also sit here and talk shit all the time about how it's, it's become a status symbol for, you know, basically if you could just shell out some bucks, you could be a dude with some Yeezys, but that means absolutely fucking nothing because there's no, there's no rarity to it. There's no anything. It's literally just a price tag. Like, yeah, you, you can go stand out on Melrose and there's motherfuckers yeah. nonstop <laughs> walking by in Yeezys. Nonstop. And people who What's special like about it? Why, would you, why do you spend shoes? Right. Why are like, you gonna drop fifteen hundred dollars on? I can see my brother in a pair of Yeezys and be like, and they wouldn't be that weird. Yeah, there's no shock Yeezys, value anymore. You know what I mean? There's zero yeah. shock value. Yeah, That's what I'm like, getting at. Yeah, like you could t- t- take that same thousand dollars and drop it on something crazy rare from another brand, like a crazy. Spend a thousand dollars on a, on a Nike shoe, and how fucking it'll crack some necks. Mm. But it'll crack the necks that you want to crack, not exactly. some kids that don't understand it. That's right. the thing. I think you it's gotten I mean? to a point now where every, I mean, everybody's a fucking lemming. Like they're all rocking the same shit. They're all doing the same things. And it's, I think it's a lot of because of what they see on the internet from these influencers or people that they look up to. It's like, oh, I need to have a pair of Yeezy so that I can feel like I'm a part of this thing. Whereas a lot of the people, to, to your point, they could spend that same amount of money on something, but they wouldn't necessarily have any connection to what they're buying. You know, they could go buy a pair of fucking Flams or a pair of fucking Paris SBs or something but they wouldn't understand the value in those and they wouldn't know what it is that they're wearing. Granted, like someone like myself or Dano, like we would break our necks to see something like that mm-hmm. and like give them all the praise in the world. But they, I don't think most people would really understand that because they don't have the, the back history of, you know, being in the game and understanding what the rarity of those things are and what that means. And then are we just being old? No, <laughs> I, no, no, but, I, but, I feel but, that I, there's definitely an ed- edge of that right now. Well, we I are feel also like established, and mm-hmm. we have some strong opinions about what I what is cool and what is not, yeah. and what's become super popular right now. I think like last five years, like this Forever Twenty One and all this shit, like kids were like crazy into like just fast shit, and they were spending all their money only in technology. I think now they're finally like, I see on Melrose, kids are like they want to know. They asked. Like it's kind of like That's wh- good to hear. it's going yeah. around. They're listening to more aggressive music. They're curious. You know, I really, really, really see that the kids now are like, I don't know how long this whole thing is gonna last. 
I don't think very, very uh, long. I, I mean, I don't know, but I really feel like now that it's it's moment of like heritage again in this next decade. It's gonna be not. Don't get me wrong. I love Radiohead, but the music's been chanting and like mumbling, and dudes are kind of like a little more softer, and everything is so mellow. I think it's back to not aggressive. I'm talking about like an aggressive modernism, which mm -hmm. is punk rock to me, which is my biggest passion. I feel like they're, all the new generations are becoming punk rock again, and mm -hmm. they're being like underground, and they're curious about, dude, I went to see 19 Inch Nails, and all the kids were losing their mind, you know? I was like, fuck. That's, That's cool. cool. Yeah. About comfort, I wear Hanes shirts all the time, or like white t-shirts, and they're fucking scratchy as fuck, but they remind me of the hood and all that shit. Fans remind me of the grip tape, that's comfort to me, you know? So that's why we're bands in, in Congress. Uh, and, that's dope, and, that's and, an interesting and, take. And, and yeah. denim, you know. Comfort and, for your soul. And, and like, <laughs> Maybe not for your soul. Champions, <laughs> when they're crispy and you haven't washed them, you wash them five times and they start getting all fucked up or you play the sport and they wear them down. Like all that shit becomes comfort. But uh, to go back to this Adidas and Nike shit, Nike, has focused all their culture and their, their whole branding into sports and all their technology and all their shit. They came up with all this technology. Again, that's my opinion. Not this or, one. No, no, no. Flyknit? Not Flyknit, Boost. This. Yo, do you want to recreate And they bang their heads trying to fucking recreate it all day long. And trust me, I know. I mean, we've had people on here, like people from In the Innovative Kitchen. There we go. Talking about, you gotta take her. talking about how they sit there and try and Thank recreate you. this specific foam technology that they made. It really is fucking, I mean, it is really good shit as fuck. I'm just and got does my first pair. Just squeeze that what? You've been gone. Yeah. I just bought my first he pair. He wore his fight oh, night. shit. Uh, first pair of boosts. What'd you get? I got a pair of the bait. EQT support futures. Wait, I want to feel it. Yeah. 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 Just give, it, like, give right. it a little soft bar there. And they're stupid comfortable. It's I can't very, deny it. Yeah, like, you know, we yeah, got I've, I've said this it's numerous comfortable. podcasts. I'm a very, very, very avid supporter of the Boost technology. You cannot deny the comfort. You know, he's, a, he's basically an Air Max head, and yeah. I respect it because of the history and how he I'm has like, what's a, a, good one to pick here? a connection to like the Air Max 1, the Air Max 90. Yeah. But when it comes Come on, to Jack. the level of comfort that, you know, Adidas has found in the boost technology and with them putting it in a lot of their silhouettes now. I'm trying to grab like a bo like a good boost you feel. Um, no, look, I, I trust you guys. I believe you. Like, yeah. you know, but I've never I, I, I wouldn't even be able to have an opinion because I've never actually sure. worn one. Yeah, I probably won't. Yeah, but I don't know. To me, to me. This is, it's, to me, it's soft as the, fuck. The, 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 the most comfortable shoe I ever worn in my life is probably the ugliest shoe in the world. What? The, the Rouge. Oh, oh yeah, the Rouge. super run. comfortable. Yeah. Like, I can't imagine, like, Those were game that shit is like wearing, like, slippers, like, 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 slides, you know? Yeah. Especially with See, the like, ribs on the insole. Yeah, yeah like, they're yeah. so yeah. comfortable. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. but I can't be seen wearing that shit all the time. Mm -hmm. But, yeah. dude, I love the, like, the design and shit is crazy. And I'm sure they're killing well, it. Ronnie destroys everything. And, uh, you know. Yeah, but it's like if you go, like, if you're, like, like Manchester United. You know, it's one mm -hmm. of those things to me. But, I mean, I'll tell you this. I probably will never, ever. Like, I w I don't, I'm not a Reebok guy or, like, a, I don't know what other brands. What's wrong with Reebok? Nothing. I'm just <laughs> not. <laughs> no, no, bro. Wrong with I'm Reebok. not. Nothing wrong with Reebok. Like, of course not. They, and Reebok's dude. basically Adidas now. Too, Reebok, so yeah, like, Adidas owns Reebok. They own See, Reebok, so I don't even know what Complex. But I, I can't. But that's what, did you see that? <laughs> like, did you see the other? <laughs> but, but it's all good. Did you see the, the Calabasas shoe that they put out, Adidas put out? It looks like the Reebok workout. Have you seen that? The, it, does it look like the... It looks exactly like a Reebok workout. Yeah, it's not, it oh, doesn't like have boost or anything. It's a shoe that have, Kanye did that yeah. was... Uh, oh, we have a pair? I think we got a pair up there. So basically, it's... We have a pair? It's similar to the Reebok workout really? silhouette. Yeah. Um, but look. Kanye just put the three stripes on and Calabasas and... <laughs> yeah. These are like the... These are like the... the these are the... <laughs> Workout ones, the yeah, ironic yeah, workout. workout. That's like, what my girls aerobics, used to wear with colors aerobics. and shit. Right, yeah. yeah. So it's essentially that same silhouette. 
switched up a little bit. Three stripes on the side. Kanye's attached to it, and it fucking flew but off it, the shelf. But it's a straight rip on a Reebok. But I would rather wear. I don't like Reebok. I would rather wear a real Reebok than this. But that's just my humble. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, you're I think, to your I think there's a. <laughs> I think the vast majority feels the same way. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But and you it's can't a, hate and on, Even though these like you can't hate it. Sold out. Look at Nego. Mm-hmm. Look at they Nego. They still with, like the resale market is like fucking twenty dollars over retail. Yeah, yeah it was really high in the beginning because people flopped. thought they could flip them for a lot more. And no, then they, it, it went slowly. Nowhere. It just declined. I mean, as expected. I mean, look at what happened with Nego with the basing ape. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, like shit. Like mm-hmm. I remember talking to like Nike dudes back in the day when I used to hang out with them, and they were like, "Dude, it's almost a blessing that this dude's putting a star in Air Force One because like yeah. <laughs> all of a sudden yeah, they uh-huh. made it like maybe this shit is gonna probably help Reebok, you know?" Yeah, you never know what the motive is like behind yeah, closed yeah, doors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's definitely they might have needed a, a resurgence and right. It's like when you like you see somebody kind of like. They make them take one for the team mm-hmm. real quick, and then they'll give them their flex after that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I this wish... Is, this might have been like, look, we need to bring Reebok back. We'll do it in a subtle way. Do this shit. We need to switch the trend. Uh-huh. Like, you know, there's that puppeteer shit that but goes on. But how dope you know? would it be for Reebok to, like, do all those fucking pastel crazy-ass colors for the girls that used to what like, wear those? Yeah, they did that. Yeah, they, Not, yeah the last decade they've done that. Yeah, they brought those back with the, the two straps at the top. Yeah, like, like, really the, running those. like the aerobic shit, right? Yeah, yeah. I used to work yeah. on So You Think You Can Dance, and you'd see dancers across the country, a lot of girls, even some guys, rocking those freestyles. Really? Those, those crazy pastel colors. But this is coming back. This is back. It's coming I'm sure. back. Dad shoe Dad all day long. Back. Oh, yeah. All the dad shoes are coming back. Mm-hmm. Dad bod, too. That f- dad, dad bod dad. is on its way back. Oh, what? Just the shoe? Just the shoe. <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> Come on. Man, I want to get into some of these topics that Let's we got it. today because we got some we shit that... We fucking slacking here. Huh? I really, yeah, really, 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 really want to get into it. I think I'm going to just skip straight down to the one I want to talk about okay. the most, <laughs> oh, which shit. is uh, 16-year-old LaMelo Ball getting his <laughs> own signature shoe with Big Baller brand. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, if you're not too familiar, Big Baller Brand is a company that was started by LeVar Ball with his three sons, um, Lonzo Ball, who just Jack, got drafted, s- drafted to the Lakers. Uh, he's the only one that has gone pro right now. There is LaMelo, who is the youngest. He's still in high school. Who's got a, he's got a game. He's got a, a jumper on him. Um, and then the middle one, uh, LiAngelo, they basically... LeVar wanted to get a billion dollars from Nike or Adidas or whoever to sign his son because they wanted to do a partnership. So this was a whole big thing that was, you know, on the blogs and everybody was talking about for a while. And basically they just said, fuck it, and started their own brand, Big Baller Brand. Now, the reason that this has been such a fiasco is because they are charging four hundred dollars for a pair of sneakers for this one five hundred for the other one or excuse me yeah five for lonzo's and then for this kid who's 16 years old who i don't want to say has yet to prove himself but he's still in high school in chino hills they're charging 395 dollars for that shoe has that ever happened before a high school a high school no No, he's the first yeah he is the first non-professional basketball player to get his own signature shoe. Well, that's because his dad, high school. High school, right. dad founded it, right? Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I tell him the family. Exactly. Now, you know my opinion. Yeah. I come it. from a punk rock underground culture. Mm-hmm. What do you think I'm going to say? Yeah, you're, you're not fucking... I mean, <laughs> look. <laughs> my dad made my me dad a shoe. I get, like, <laughs> your dad is, you I'm know, just, he's he's your creator, whatever. But it's like... Same thing kind of happened with Tony Hawk and his son, Riley Hawk. Like, he was getting free birdhouse boards and, like, um, Hawk shoes from his dad. But it's like, you're my dad. Like, this doesn't mean anything to me. And well, I, that, I Frank feel Hawk like- was the president of National Skateboarding Association. Mm-hmm. So there's nothing. Like, Hosoi pushes his kid. That's different. Right. I, I, you know what I'm saying. It's yeah. completely different. If your dad supports you, that's a blessing. Like, I'm not I trying agree. to disrespect I, that. No, sure. I agree. But if my kid wants me to make him a shoe... <laughs> I'd be like, bro, you better earn that That's fucking shoe. That's what I'm shoe. saying. Exactly. You gotta fucking go be a Jordan, and then maybe I'll. You gotta I'll earn your yeah, exactly. You're that, 16, you get a shoe. That's the whole it's thing. Like that you're I'm 16, not you like, get a Ferrari. Like, come on, bro, you gotta feel. You haven't hustle. like yeah, you don't That's appreciate him. it because That's you don't him. understand it. So I mean, God, much. at least in he's the a video. lucky guy. I'm That's not him hating the video. Yeah, at least. I mean, look, maybe there's something in the new culture that I don't understand, but. I'd like, if I was him, I'd mm-hmm. like to get half of the, That's the shoe. money 
and get Nike yeah. to be have me as an underdog. Right. For because no money. Then, I like it better than the other one. You with Nike with an established brand. That's the brand black He shoe. clearly has that's already. That's the brand black shoe. No, no, no. That's, they, that's, added, that's, they added a B. That's literally what happened. Oh, oh, oh. No, no that this is actually. Okay, yeah, 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 this is the big bar. One. Yeah, this is the, M, but, what is the MB1. But guess what? But, that worked. What do I know? I agree to an <laughs> extent. Fucking, the Kanye shoe worked. So but like, Kanye, may he may not have solidified himself in the fashion slash sneaker industry. I mean, he has now, oh, yeah, but when that started, he was, but he has such a, a catalog in no, music is history powerful. of music. music. Exactly. Just, like, if you add anything, if you add anything to music, music is the sauce, like it's the, you know, or mm-hmm. film, like if you put, he's just, he's smart enough to actually turn it into product. Right. Okay. So this is the, fo- so this is what Dana was talking about. This is a company down here called Brand Black. This is the shoe that they put out before. Where are your pair, yeah. man? And this is, uh, I'm good. Uh, and that is the shoe that um, LaMelo is Seeing a lot of familiar details here. Well. Same. And but, it looks like it's just uh But it doesn't matter even what it looks like. It's what it means. Like, you're already been here like, nah, bro. Yeah, but I think that a lot of I what- I mean, they did big, straight rip this other shoe. What but Big like, Baller brand does is like, with the first shoe, Lonzo's shoe, it was basically a poor man's Kobe. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it, like- yeah. These guys a are a poor man's Kobe, twice the price. Right, established More. individuals with an More. established brand that gets respect. And I and look, I, I know there's a whole side conversation about supporting black-owned businesses and all that. Like I get it, but this is not something that I can get behind because one, this kid is 16 years old. He's only done a few good games in high school. He hasn't proven himself in the league. And he hasn't earned it. Your and dad that's owns more a respectful respectful than than four hundred dollars shoe. shoe? That's more respectful than supporting all the shit that like all the our cultures does. Like right. we have to like actually be like, yo, what are you guys doing? This is not how we got to things. Right. You know? Exactly. So that's I cool. think that's just my you know, we had a conversation outside oh, yeah. a little bit, like, what are your thoughts on this whole situation? Right off the bat, I, I mean I made this immediate distinction where I'm like, mm-hmm. using the same fucking shoes, basically. Yeah. Uh and I was talking about the first one, the LeVars, not LeVar. Lonzo. Lonzo. Lonzo's, and how immediately they had the boost-like technology that, I mean, like, at least appearance uh-huh. in the back of the heel that is exactly like Skechers when they did their little boost riff. So mm-hmm. it's like, clearly there's some sort of connection here. Uh-huh. And we learned just recently we that, learned brand recently that is Skechers owns brand black. Mm. So there's a lot okay. going on, but here. no, but the, but no one knows that. But it, it's not like is it we is it public that. knowledge or is it? I don't know if it's public knowledge. But here's what I want to say. It is now. Is that this new, <laughs> the new model, not this piece of shit? Uh, <laughs> the new one, I I actually like it more just because it's closer to the brand black ones, and I kind of like, like the brand black, black ones. ones. <laughs> I kind of like those shoes. Well, this yeah, was the first one. I'm still not buying them. This was Lonzo Ball who just got drafted um, to the NBA Lakers. with the Lakers. This was the shoe that they basically announced the brand with, and it's 500 bucks. It's 500 bucks, and it's essentially one of Kobe's. Uh, I don't remember exactly which one it was, like the seven or the eight, but it's essentially a Kobe Bryant silhouette yeah. that they just like kind of took. And during one of his episodes of sneaker shopping with Joe LaPuma, he said that he drew it in three hours, and that's what they sent to the get the samples done. And it's just like, there's like, there's really nothing. But like, like, that's the storytelling. But that's the storytelling. I drew it in three hours. No, but like, look, again, that's something I want to get behind. The problem is not even that. Nego copied the Air Force One. Like people get inspired or copy or they're into shit. And they they take a silhouette. They just own it. No, Nego is not like, oh, I didn't steal the Air Force One. Like, yeah, that's a blatant. Yeah, that's this. That was a jack move. Yeah. 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 But, like, it's almost better than trying to be like, oh, I created this shit. That's what happens with the culture. Everybody thinks they're fucking creators, and we're just learning, and we do our version of, of, of the shit. You know, we take credit for some crazy shit. Anyways. No, I do like the literal <laughs> definition of what you're doing right now and how it is that, like, you're just repurposing everything that you fucking are passionate about and putting mm-hmm. it in like one little spot. That shit's dope. I mean, hopefully it'll connect, you know? That doesn't, that I think it's dope, but that doesn't mean that I'm gonna, you know, you never know. It might, maybe it'll, it'll click once I'm gone, you know? Mm-hmm. Like the whole idea of it. But I'm cool with that. Yeah. yeah. Cool with that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was just having a conversation, because we posted that Ari piece, and uh, I think maybe right before we did, 
I was talking to Afro Kicks. Shout out to Afro Kicks. Uh, I don't know which camera yeah. it is, but shout out to you, brother. Uh, when we were talking, and it, like I couldn't tell if it was getting heated because Afro Kicks is so passionate, especially when he's talking about Air Force Ones. And so it was like, I mentioned the Ari thing. I was like, oh yeah, the dude who did the menthol tans or whatever. <laughs> And he was like, what's that? And I was like, yeah, you know, the, the Newport box thing or whatever. And he was like, oh, that's a ripoff of an Air Force One or whatever. And I was like, yeah, it's definitely like 100%, you know, fully inspired by an Air Force One. Like, right. you know, not yeah. acting like it wasn't. Right. Mm -hmm. I was like, but, you know, it's like on, like, the only thing I can say towards it is that, you know, Ari was coming at, at it from a marketing and advertising spin of yeah. how people were, you know, marketing cigarettes towards Ridiculous. kids and mm -hmm. this whole thing and I, like that was the whole shit and he's like a marketing dude he wasn't trying to come at it and be like oh i'm a sneaker designer now or whatever <laughs> but also he made his own like the sole was a new mold that he made yeah it's a totally different outsole it's his yeah. ari instead of air uh -huh. like yes he's flipping it but it's not like he did like a customizer job where he just took some fucking ari air, air force one soles mm -hmm. and <laughs> flip the fucking swoosh upside down and like he put a lot of work into that yeah he spent more on the packaging than he did on the shoe but like we were kind of going at it a little bit like not bad or whatever but i was just like kind of defending ari because i feel like if afro kicks like had them in hand and kind of like looked at all the details like in the little tag and all the little shit how it was kind of yeah. making fun of like the Nike and everything, how they were marketing, like on the inside of the tag, it was like blah 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 blah. Is all that yeah, was written amazing. in the shit. Like all that shit is kind of ill, like you know whatever. But we were kind of having that conversation as far as like things being inspired by versus being mm -hmm. like a straight rip off, mm -hmm. which you know I don't know. There, I guess there's a fine line there. Yeah, it's weather. a very fine line to tiptoe across. <laughs> I mean, with something like that, parody almost. You yeah, know? that that falls in that parody where it's almost like flattery because you know he like you said the tag literally says blah 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 and like yeah. a lot of things that were happening at the time that that shoe was produced was put into the production of that so i don't think that falls under the category of something like that and he only made Triple 200 B. pairs and that was yeah. that it wasn't like right nego making a fucking fortune on babesters <laughs> that's Man. cool that people are trying to do that limited shit you know yeah yeah. Um, next topic I want to touch because we got a few minutes left that I want to get right, into cool. uh, some of these things. Uh, the the 20 year anniversary of the Air Max 97. So there is two that are coming out uh, very soon. Skepta has his own Air Max 97 that he's dropping uh, this Saturday, I believe, where he took inspiration from the color palette of Morocco, which is one of his favorite cities, um, as well as the Air Tune Max from 1999. Um, what do you think about these? I'm I'm fucking I'm yeah, riding with those '97s like so dark hard. Shoes for sure. I love the iridescent because it reminds me in a similar fashion of the invisibility cloak Kobe's. Uh -huh. uh, Kobe eights are the ones that I have. I love how you know the iridescent changes within the different lights and things like that. But I like the black with the yellow airbag. Yeah, mm -hmm. I love what they're doing with the '97 because '97 I feel like <clears throat> was one of those ones that back back then got a lot of love and then it kind of died out. And then obviously with the 20 year anniversary and the resurgence of it and a lot of the, the new everything. colors and, the, you know, some of the OG stuff they're bringing back, like the Silver Bullets the, and all the, that. Like, the, the whole 90s, just the whole clothing just whole industry vibe. is yeah. going to just match perfectly with yep. like that swoosh by itself, the branding and the soul, like it just goes with all the gear that's coming out. You know, and yeah. this feels really it reminds me to of me Prada. Yeah. you know what I mean. Yeah, like, it's the ultra. It's the, weird it the, it's the ultra, right? Okay. Remember yeah. Prada in the '90s? Of it kind of reminds yeah. me of all that. I think this is like the tech version of it mm -hmm. from the '90s and shit. Um, I, yeah, I, like, I like that observation. <laughs> no, I definitely feel, and I like that he took inspiration from from things that he loved. And there's also little elements. Um, you can't see it in this photo exactly, but there's just like little things like that he took where he put the. Um, SK. The SK, where the usual like Nike, um, mm -hmm. like the TN, the yeah, where the TN yeah. is. Oh, that's dope. Yeah, um, super dope. Little thing. And just yeah, just little thing. Things. Like I forgot the shape of the shape around the SK was. I forgot exactly what it was. Uh, oh, that little. Kinda. Yeah, it's like a little octagon or something like that. I forgot exactly what the inspiration was behind that. I should have wrote that down. I apologize. Um, but no, I'm loving the '97s. What they're doing with you know the ultras and changing it up a little bit. And then there's also an Air Max 97 undefeated collaboration that's dropping. And we know that there is a black colorway that's going to be releasing, but we don't have an official release 
on the white pair that has been popping up lately. Um, DJ Khaled was one of the first. So this is the black one. Uh, it's got patent leather around Gucci. the toe. Why those got... guys are always like getting all the good shoes? <laughs> <laughs> How come they're not sending me this shit? Shout out to my boys from on the field. Yeah, undefeated. Yeah, yeah. They didn't put in some work. They've definitely held it down for, for the sneaker <laughs> yeah, game for quite a while. They, like, they, they, they know. They, yeah, they've Look, earned their keep. What a coincidence that it's got Gucci colors, huh? <laughs> I wonder why. <laughs> So this is the one that we know is going to release to the public, but there is also a white version that has popped up online. Uh, DJ Khaled was one of the first to uh, basically sh show it off on the internet. But then there's also our homie Ron. Shout out to Ron over at Bait. He just dropped some. I fuck uh, with that. Yeah, see that? Like, that's just crazy. Now, Ron posted a few as well. But I'm um, a sucker for Gucci. And he was... <laughs> He was gifted his pair. So my question is, is this going to be a friends and family? And it's funny that we have the, the Masters out here, similar to the way that the white Air Max Masters mm -hmm. were oh, only given fire. to, you know, certain people that were very near and dear to Nike Sportswear. Uh, you think that's going to be the same thing with the white ones? Yes. Yeah, you don't think it'll I see think a public release? Those shits are hard. Too, yeah, this, this, this is the photo Ron posted yeah, on his the, story the yeah. other day. Those are, that's that's, that's, that's the photo right. out there yeah. of those shoes right now. Yeah. Yeah, shout out to you, Ron. That's a that's a good look for you, player. Uh, oh, so Ron, you said Ron got them? This is Ron's yeah, photo. Ron. That motherfucker. So Ron posted <laughs> on his uh, his Instagram story yesterday. He posted like two photos, and then he linked it to another blog for you know the rest of the full detail. Look. Son of a bitch. Uh, but he was gifted this pair. Nah, that looks like a sample size. <laughs> But, Betty, uh, you know I'm a size nine. It's easy sample see, size. See, yeah, sample <laughs> size. You're chilling. <laughs> yeah. You got the plug already. Yep. Um, what do you think about these, though, as, as like, compared to the black? I already know you're a dark shoe guy, but for the me, white ones like, the I want the black ones. You want the black ones, yeah. yeah. I would love to see the white ones actually hit retail or, you know, come out later on down the road. Or just, you know, in my closet. Or just show up, you know, <laughs> where, you know, it, it, if, however we need to make this work, just, you know, holler at me. Um, yeah, that's But what crazy. are your thoughts? Do you, do you think that the... Because it looks, obviously, it's got a very, very Gucci-esque appearance to it. Mm -hmm. This almost reminds me of Christmas with the white, like the snow and yeah. the fucking green and red and shit like that. Uh, snow. You, I, 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 I normally buy all my shoes black, but right yeah. now, for some reason, I'm mm -hmm. buying them white. You fuck so. with the 97s at all, though? I do. I mean, mm -hmm. I, they're so comfortable. Like, okay, yeah. you know, I'm... You know, they're just comfy to me. They look 90s, and I've been wearing a lot of tracksuits and shit. So oh, that's, hell, oh yeah. yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that's like 100%. That's yeah. like, I'm, that's all my fall, 2017. <laughs> I'm going to be wearing all kinds of shit like this. Yeah, the materials that you were talking about earlier. Yeah. So you need to get those. That's that's you all day. I think this is going to be your your swing back into a, Watch, cl a nice, gonna, clean When shoot. I get on my car, I'm going to bug those boys right now and be like, yo, what's hey, up? Hey, please do. Let's see if that... <laughs> Because you might be able to get some information and kind of circle it back to us and let us know a little bit more that we don't know right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll pick their <laughs> See if the sure. undefeated fairy sprinkles a little magic on yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sprinkle yeah. me, baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, I mean, man. I don't know if they'll share, but... Do you think this is a testament <laughs> to, like, Nike's marketing power, though, with, like, the collaboration being a 97 and it happening to fall in the 20-year anniversary? Or do you think this is something Dude, that they, they were... working on this last year, for sure, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 100%. Yeah. yeah. This is you know, at least fucking 12 to 18 months of mm -hmm. anything to make and that Gucci go to market. Gucci has been that hot for the, that long right now. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. So were, was, with the like Gucci sneakers, gonna, with the snakes and shit like anymore. that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if these end up coming yeah. out. Well, the black ones, though. <laughs> the black ones most definitely will. Uh, how are we looking on time, boys? Eight minutes. Eight minutes? All right, perfect. We can get into the last topic that I have written down. Um, the Air Jordan 32 reveal. At first, I was impressed. Jack, give me a sound effect. I just. <laughs> do we even care about some sort of a sound effect for the color? Like a wah. I don't care about these two colorways. I want to see other things. My question is do we even care about the new. New Jordan. Jordan. Like, right. Yeah. Because no. it, it, at this point, it's like, yeah, we're just we're going down the line as far as like the numbers. Because yes, this is the 32nd Pro model or signature model, excuse me, under the jump brand uh, branding. But like. Right off the bat, does this? What the fuck is that Jumpman about? Like you're throwing back to the two. Before yeah, it's got a Jumpman. lot of uh, Jordan you got two. Got rid of the swoosh on the two. Like, so what are you doing? Like, right, we got the, look the, like the, two. Just the wings. Like, we got doing? the wings. We got yeah. the Jumpman. <laughs> Norma's Jumpman on the fucking <laughs> So to give you guys that are listening a little bit of background, the shoe pays homage to the Air Jordan two with its shape uh, and its luxe Italian look. 
the Wings logo on the tongue, and uh, it will release in a Rosa Corsa Rosso Corsa edition on September 23rd with the bread high and low dropping on October 18th. Now, that shit looks like a Ferrari to me, bro. It's mm. totally what it's designed. Like. It looks yeah. fast as fuck. Yeah, <laughs> it looks fast, fast as fuck. Like, but not these colors. I need uh-huh. to see a red, black, and white version. I'm not talking about it. Or I'm not going to even just think about buying them. <laughs> but if they had an awesome red, black, and white pair and I could get that jump man shaved off, uh-huh. is that? And maybe we can talk about it. What, do you th- <laughs> what is this texture I'm seeing on the side? Is this like a, a suede, like molded suede? Molded, formed. And the black one, go to the black one, Jack, because the black one has like molded, like, Snakeskin looking. Oh More shit! Like, like that looks better. Reptile. reptile, yeah. Yeah, which is a throwback to the two. Uh huh. Uh-huh. It does wings. look like the two. They have a lot of it. Yeah, because it's the thirty-two, so they're giving a throwback yeah. too. Which is hence the big. Would you wear them though? I never would. Not these colors. <laughs> I would Not never. I would never wear the thirty-two. I wouldn't wear this any is Jordan. 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 I would only wear like from <laughs> one <laughs> to five. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Especially one, but like <laughs> that's yeah. See that that goes with my question. Like but, yeah. one but, through but thirteen, sometimes fourteen. Like that's really where it's that's the the, the history is, and that's what people care about. Who is the market? Is the question for new Jordans? Like, Actual basketball players, yeah, people that are right. actually people on the China. hardwood. Who are basketball fans or just Jordan? Just, well, that's the biggest fucking love. basketball country in the world. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I feel like those kids are probably wearing Currys. They're wearing Under Armors. Because they don't have any, like, younger kids don't have any connection to Michael Jordan. Not as well. They know of him as a yeah, fucking crying meme. Yeah, who is this meme. demo? Yeah, you know him as a crying <laughs> meme and some shoes. That's but No, like but, you know, like their parents and shit. Jordan. I don't know. I, 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 I would guess. Yeah. Here's what I got to say about them. I want to I wanna see what they feel like. No, that's not what you want to uh, say. Yeah. You want to stick my foot in there. What, if they feel <laughs> great, <laughs> you're going to wear those? <laughs> What's that? If they feel great, you're really going to wear them? No, no, I just want to see what they feel like just uh, for me personally for five seconds. Dana likes to stick his foot like, shit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's like for a performance shoe. So like some like the Yeezys, which is a lifestyle shoe. I, I respect the, the lacing system on that. Whereas with this one, like what exactly are you tightening? Right. Like they're, you're just going to get this weird like bubble up the middle while you're trying to you know, tighten your shoe because basketball shoes, yeah. you need them where, tight. Where like, yeah, yeah. Was yeah, it just, get, yeah it's just gonna cinch the top, yeah. right? Like that, that just things like that don't really make sense to me, because um, I feel like you know you do have a an actual tongue at the top, but it's all prime or excuse me, fly knit down at the bottom. And I just don't, I don't know. I don't they look like a sense. car to me. Yeah, it's crazy. It's totally I, like hundred, listen, yeah. a million percent. Somebody sat in there and there was an image. This and this goes on all the time. Half of everything that's made in regards to like footwear, when it comes to the design perspective, they're sitting there with an image of a car and trying an to an image of a sports car. Yeah. yeah. And this is definitely look. Those are the taillights in the back. There's this, it's like an old Ferrari. Jack, Remember when they had what was, was it like a, a like a late '80s like early '90s Ferrari with that fucking, Testarossa, the Testarossa with the mm. fin all down the <laughs> fucking middle. Well, the, the colorway is called the Rosa Corsa, so you never know. Yeah. It could be very. Uh, well, it is Italian much leather. Like I'm sure it's inspired and all that. Like because the, the tool was Italian. The tool was made in, in Italy. Yeah. Which is fucking mm. dope. Damn. 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 Well, I, I guess somebody will buy. Somebody will play basketball in it. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm, I'm sure. Go and stick I'm my sure. Foot in a pair. No, you're not. Russell Westbrook. <laughs> <Out of store? laughs> yeah, we'll definitely see it on the court, and we'll see it in NBA 2K. Yeah, but there I'm, you go. Westbrook's definitely gonna be wearing them. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. But I don't think we'll actually see those um, on the streets. But again, that's just my Unless opinion. Unless Kanye wears them. Kanye ain't fucking with Nike. Ju- this, <laughs> <laughs> Yeezy jumped over the jump. Then man. everybody's you know? going crazy. Come on now. Oh my God, I had to. I'm, I'm, <laughs> don't sorry. Do, I'm not Kanye's champion. Uh, uh, <laughs> come on, bro. Come on. No, God, man. this was a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> now, fuck that. I'm standing by it. Oh, shit. Shout out to Adidas. <laughs> yeah, you're going to be there this weekend, man. Watch, yeah, your, watch yeah. your mouth. Exactly. Now, Miguel, we, uh, we appreciate you coming and sitting and chopping it up with us today, brother. Thank you. For where nice. um, where can the people find you on the internet or, you know, Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, whatever it is that you have? Um, my personal uh, Instagram is Migi Gala, M-I-G-G-Y-G-A-L-A. Okay. <laughs> yeah. M-I-G-G-Y-G-A-L-A. That's my okay. personal. And uh, my brands are U.S. Alteration and Reconstruct Studio. Uh, U.S. Alterations in Beverly Hills on Wilshire and Reconstruct is on Melrose and Martell. Perfect. What up? Daniel's hometown. Yeah, that's his. Daniel's stubborn hands. 
Hell yeah. It's, it's funny. We actually walk past your shop every uh, Monday night, leaving the dark room when we go play darts. Or like and every he, fucking meal he has at Village Idiot. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, 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 we actually, we've stopped and looked in there before, and he just mentioned to me earlier today that was your shop. So it's, Yeah, yeah, I, we're, we're doing no a idea. champion. Uh, Sweet. Shout out to champion. Manny. Hell yeah. Um, <laughs> we're doing a, a, a collaboration with them. We're going to get all the champion gear. We're going to get people's initials on them and stuff. It'll be fun. Oh, sick. When are you doing that? Uh, next month, we're okay. starting, Word. and uh, after that, we're having a pop-up with Futura, the toys and stuff. It'll be dope. Nice. Sweet. Well, this guys, if you're listening or if you're watching, make sure you stay tuned to Miggy Gala on Instagram so that you can get all those dates. Uh, once again, we appreciate you coming Thanks, and sitting down man. with us. It's been a blessing. Got to talk a little bit about skateboarding, about fashion, sneakers, all that, uh, which, like I said, is near and dear to my heart, so that was dope. Uh, for Dano, John Colombo, and Miguel, I am Steezus Christ. This has been The Kickback. Thank you for joining us, and we will see you again next week. A piece of oh, we, uh, peace A <laughs> Can I get the bird? Hell yeah. That was fun, man. No, the other one, the, <laughs> the monkey. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>